What is going on, everybody out there in the YouTube trucking community? Sean Cahalan, Christian Brother Trucker, coming at you again with another video. The long-awaited video. I know you all have been waiting for this. My review of Melton Truck Lines. So, as promised, I am going to review this company. And I am next, I'm going to be reviewing Pascal Truck Lines. Um, but I'm going to be telling you about the pay structure, the opportunities, the different things that uh, Melton advertises on their website and I'm going to give you an inside view from a perspective of a driver who has been driving for about six and a half years um, this perspective of course is coming from a driver who has been an owner operator who has done lease operations um, and have driven for small medium and large size fleets um, I just reviewed the most current information so that the information that I'm going to be giving you is going to be up to date and current. Um, and some of this I'm going to be drawing off of my memory from the experiences that I experienced from the day that I set foot in orientation and went through their orientation um, and got my own truck. I drove for them for about six months before I had just completely had enough and uh, basically came back to box van driving box truck 53 foot drive-in and I'll tell you why so I'll tell you about my experiences I'll tell you about my opinions but as with anything um, don't take my word for it don't let my experiences persuade you to not give Melton a, a shot like I did um, it wasn't all bad even though I left uh, I left on good terms and I uh, I did not you know burn the bridges I can go back if I want to go back uh, because I believe that uh, even if I don't agree with a company I don't like their policies I don't like their procedures um, I always do my very very best uh, to leave on good terms it's very rare that I will ever explode and do something completely out of line um, but again they, they made a lot of mistakes, and I'll cover those. Um, and I will give you a, a rundown of, of what to expect. And of course, all of this depends on who you get as a fleet manager, how you like to run, what you're okay with, and what you're not okay with. So you could go to Melton and drive for them and absolutely love it and make a really good paycheck, and, and that could be great for you if it fits for you. Um, it just didn't work for me. So Melton Truck Lines uh, is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's their main terminal, um, and their facility is, is rather large. They've got about 12 to 1,300 trucks, and a, they've got probably about 2,000 to 2,400 uh, trailers in their fleet. They're all flatbed. Uh, they don't do anything else but flatbed, um, and that's basically all they do. They have yards down in um, Laredo, El Paso, Birmingham, Alabama, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there's probably there's probably one I'm forgetting or two. I know they have drop lots in several several big uh, terminal locations that they use. Um, so you know, but they have I think three main facilities: Laredo, um, Laredo, Birmingham, and Tulsa are their their three main terminals that they that they do hiring training and stuff like that. Uh, if you are going to start out with them, you will be going to the uh, Tulsa Terminal to go through their one-week to seven-day um, orientation process because they bring you in. They, um, I'll, I'll walk you through the orientation process here in a minute because I went through the orientation process and it was the longest orientation I've ever gone through in my life. <clears throat> so the equipment that they run, they run... Um, you know three three to four year old model equipment freightliner cascadias and peterbilt 389s um they used to run a lot of kenworths but they're starting to get away from the kenworths um something about the the pack car engines and those kenworths that they didn't like so they're they they are switching over to uh peterbilt's with the cummins the isx 15s um they're 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 pretty nice trucks the only thing i didn't like about them is that they're all mid-roof uh, sleepers. I think they do that to cut down on weight and probably cost. Um, they run 53 foot flatbeds and step decks. They don't have a whole lot of step decks 
so a lot of their fleet is a majority 53 foot uh, utilities and Great Dane Great Dane trailers on their tractors what they do is they set up an, a, a, a big um, cargo utility box on the passenger side attached to the truck they put a smaller fuel tank on the right hand mm -hmm. side and a bigger fuel tank on the left um, equipment wise they they put a um, so they let's see if I can describe this they put a headache rack on the back of the truck and on the headache rack there's a compartment and you put your chains and your binders and all your edge protectors your chain edge protectors inside this compartment along with whatever else you can stuff in there on the side is where you put your four by four by four foot um dunnage materials and your coil racks for hauling coils on the left hand side you usually will attach your bungee cords and your ladder will go on the left hand side um, your dunnage they have you stow that underneath the landing gear bracing and all of your equipment and everything that you need to carry they expect you to carry it in this one box and then to use the, basically the side boxes that are on the truck um, I don't agree with that setup I never have agreed with that setup I voiced that opinion the entire time that I was there I told them that the way that they are running their equipment and the way that they have their equipment set up is a complete waste of time uh, it wastes the driver's time it's a lot of work uh, basically they run three tarp setups they run um, two blue tarps and a, and a black utility tarp that, that fits in the middle instead of doing a two-piece um, a lot of fleets what you'll see is they'll carry a set of lumber tarps which are a little bit longer and heavier and then you'll also carry uh, another set of steel tarps which are only four foot drops but are much much thicker and uh, they're not prone to tearing um, as easily when you put these particular tarps these three these three tarp setups they're the lumber tarps and they're all um, made of a thinner material and as soon as you put them on steel they tear I like crazy you have to really pat out your material and be really particular about protecting your tarps um, so there's three tarps and those three tarps go inside that utility box that is on the passenger side of the truck you have to roll them up a specific way and jam all these tarps into this little box um, it's a big box but after you you uh, <laughs> after you flop these big old tarps in there uh, you don't have room for much of anything else um, I understand that they do it for business they do it to cut down on costs it's all financially every decision that they make is is for profit uh, they cut down on the um, initial equipment setup and it really doesn't benefit you as the driver it causes a whole lot of extra work so I'm gonna come back to that point as part of the reasons why I left um, but we are going to talk about the opportunities that they have and the pay structure so they have regional dedicated or over the road so if you're on a regional or dedicated they say that you'll be home every 7 to 14 days and you get one day off for seven days out so if you're regional you may get a 34 at the house um, and you won't be home every weekend um, maybe if you're on a dedicated um, so that's uh, regional dedicated they'll they'll get you home a little bit more often if you're over the road you're going to be out two to three weeks and you get one day off for every seven days out so um, there were times when they kept me out for four weeks because I was on the wrong side of the country before I put in my home call request uh, it's very complicated um, I, I, I absolutely do not agree with this home time policy um, it's another reason why I ultimately left the company uh, but if you don't mind staying out for seven to fourteen days taking a 34th the house uh, and if you don't mind only getting one day off for every seven days that you're out knock it out if you don't want to be home very often perfect 
Uh, but if you do want a little bit more home time, um, they're not really flexible on helping you out with that. Uh, the pay structure basically is based on your experience. So if you start out with, with no experience, they're going to start you out at 52 cents a mile. If you've got uh, 6 to 11 months experience, it's 53 cents a mile. 1 to 3 years is 58 cents a mile. 3 plus years is 60 cents a mile. Once you come in and hire on at that rate, you will get uh, mountain raises every 120,000 miles for one penny per every 120,000 miles. Your pay basically caps out at around 66 cents or 68 cents, even if you're at a million plus. So, um, you know, they, they claim that it's a great pay structure and, you know, I, I guess it is. Um, one of the nice things that they do is they do pay you a $5,000 sign-on bonus, which pays out over the course of six months. Um, it's it's kind of complex the way that they pay it out. Uh, they don't pay it out all, all at once. Once you hit certain milestones, they will add it on to your uh, settlements or onto your pay, paychecks. <clears throat> Some additional pay... Tarping pay is $100. It's $50 to tarp, $50 to untarp. So keep in mind, boys and girls, um, that if you tarp a load and you swap out with another trailer or another driver, uh, you won't get the full tarp pay. Because if you only tarped it on, then you get 50 bucks. If you tarp it on and tarp it off, then you get the $50. You do not get loading and unloading pay. So... This was the other thing that I didn't agree with. Um, I've worked for companies before that gave you load and unload pay and tarping pay. Um, we'll all cover some more of this later on. $2,100 orientation pay. So that's, that's one of the really cool things is that, yeah, their orientation is really long, but it's paid training. So you, live, you, know, you stay in a hotel room, um, you go through their training, and you make about $2,100. They'll pay you $400 in the first week. On the second week, they add the rest to your paycheck after you get into your truck and get rolling. Um, $25 to repower a load, and they pay you a per diem program, which basically makes part of your pay structure uh, untaxable or taxed at a different rate, so it reflects in you getting more um, take-home pay. Tuition reimbursement, they pay up to $10,000 at $150 a month. So, uh, I guess that is what it is. That would take quite a long time to pay off your tuition if they're only paying you $150 a month. Yeah. So, you'd have to stay with them for years to get your tuition paid off, right? Uh, driver referral bonus. $750 for new drivers unexperienced and $1,000 for experienced drivers that come in and go to work for the company. They do split this up. So they have to um, they have to come in and drive and get and go through orientation. I think you get part of it when they when they sign up and you get part of it if they stay on with the company. So they don't just pay it out. There's certain <laughs> certain little intricacies of how they can deny this to you if the driver doesn't stick around um, extra pay over dimensional loads pay 16 cents additional per mile hazardous material loads pay six dollars or six cents per mile Canadian loads six cents per mile extra pick drop and repower it's twenty five dollars for every additional pick and drop um, I have done six six drop loads and with two picks, and so this this can add up to be quite a bit of money. The only problem with that is when you're doing extra picks and drops, you're not driving as many miles. Clean DOT inspection pays twenty five dollars. New York City bureau pay pays seventy five dollars. Holiday pay they pay an additional thirty dollars for every holiday that you're out on the road. Um, your layover pay. It's $50 for the first 24 hours and $75 for each additional 24 hours. And that goes in after you put in your final emptied out call 
so on and so forth. Breakdown pay, uh, they don't tell you how much they pay you for breakdown, because it all depends on this and that and other, and I, I don't know why they don't tell you how much they pay you for breakdown. Um, your vacation, um, uh, I think after one year you get one, one paid week vacation, and it goes up to four weeks, so it caps out at four weeks. Again, your orientation is five to seven days. You will basically go through orientation. You'll do your UA, your urine analysis, and your DOT physical uh, the first the first day. And then you know classroom time videos or in um, operations, sitting through safety and yeah 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 all that fun stuff. And then they take you out to the yard to uh, teach you securement. They teach you how to secure loads. Uh, they have a yard out there that has all kinds of different stuff on different trailers that you can practice on. Um, they teach you how to strap and how to how to chain these loads down cor uh, correctly. I use that term loosely uh, because they do everything the mountain way. And the mountain way, of course, is to overkill everything that you do. So on a load that the DOT requires that you, let's say you, you're hauling a load of, um, I don't know, steel pipe. And... DOT requirement says you have to run a strap every five, uh, every eight feet. Well, Mountain's going to make you run them every five. So whatever you think about um, securement, double it at Mountain. Um, yeah, it, it's it's redundant and it's ridiculous. Um, they have force dispatch, and the drivers uh, out there will snitch on you if they see something that you didn't do you didn't put enough securement on there there's a little link on their website when you download their mountain app where you can literally snitch on another driver it's called the driver's report card or something like that or um observation thing there's a macro on their qualcomm where if you see a driver that didn't secure something correctly or you don't think he did a good enough job or whatever, 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 that's great. They got a macro on your Qualcomm. You can take his truck number down and you can tell the company what you think he did wrong. Um, as a military feel, very corporate, uh, corporate structure. Yeah, so I'll cover that more here in a minute. Um, and the mileage that you're able to produce at Mountain um, really wasn't really wasn't all that great um, there was a there was a paycheck where I didn't receive a paycheck and that was just because of the load timing uh, basically I came out from the house and they put me on a 2200 or 2400 mile run um, from Tulsa Oklahoma all the way over to California so I didn't get the load in um, on time to, in order to hit the payroll cutoff so that hurt a little bit if you're starting out in the industry and you need to get your feet wet um, and you want to give flatbed a shot, um, Melton could be a good company for you. Um, I use that term very loosely um, just because of, of what I experienced. You, you can make a decent paycheck. You're not going to make a whole lot of money. They, they tout that they have the best pay in the industry, um, but I would quickly counteract that and say I make more with the company that I'm at right now, drive and drive in. Um, so how can you say that you're an industry pay leader um, and start your drivers out at less than what you would start out here at at Pascal Truck Lines? So I, I, don't, I don't really know. But of course I have a lot more experience, so my pay rate is going to be a little bit higher. Um, so, you know, you have the potential to make a lot more money, uh, but with that, you know, if you do want to come in and make a lot of money, make sure that you have all your endorsements on your license and have your passport if you can. If you can take a hazmat load and take that up into uh, Canada and get a load back, you will make six cents plus six cents. That's 12 cents extra per mile on top of your base mileage rate. So you, you can make a lot of money if you have the right endorsements. Um, the oversize, I worked there for six months and never pulled an oversized load. I didn't see the purpose in going and getting a hazmat uh, endorsement while I was with them. 
uh, because there's just no guarantee that you're actually going to use it. So, I mean, you go and you spend all that time to get the uh, hazmat endorsement to maybe use it once, twice. I don't know. They they don't haul a whole lot. They haul uh, roofing materials and glue and stuff like that. So there are hazmat loads that they do pull, and they do pull some hazmat loads from Laredo all the way up into um, into Canada. So you can make that extra money. Uh, yes, you can. So, overall, my snapshot of this company is if, is if you are just coming into the industry and you need to get started, you need to get the experience, they're a good company to go for. Um, the tuition reimbursement, and I think they have a driving school now, too, that they, that they work with. So, if you need to get your CDL, pretty good opportunity if you live in the Tulsa area, um... You know, you might give them a call, see what see what they can do to line you out. If uh, if you've got your eyes on those flatbeds and you really want to, uh, you really want to give that a shot and uh, hit the ground running. The one thing that I do like about it is th they pay to train you. You make quite a decent paycheck while you're in orientation, and you know the transition to getting out there and getting going. You make decent money from from the start. Um, but unfortunately, you will work your butt off. And a lot of the things were, it were kind of more operationally detailed that I didn't like. Uh, of course, you know, like I said, with their equipment, I didn't like the fact that they didn't put the equipment boxes and a uh, dunnage rack underneath on the trailers. That way you can keep all of the equipment on the trailer and not on the truck. Every time you have to do a swap or a repower or pick something up at the yard, you have to transfer all of your equipment off of one trailer onto another trailer. Um, this includes tarps. If you drop a load at any of their yards, um, you either have to pull most of your bungees off, leave the tarps on, go to the shop, grab an extra set of tarps, put them on your truck. Um, or if you go down into Laredo, they have these covered shacks that you will pull your load under and you literally have to untarp, unstrap the whole load. Or no, you don't you don't unstrap the whole load, but you untarp it and then you roll your tarps up and put them in your truck and then you got to pull your dunnage, your V-boards and everything else and you've got to swap all that stuff over to another trailer. It's a nightmare. Um when you get to the yard and you initially get under a load, they don't pay you anything to get under that load get it set up and get it on the road and get it rolling so play this scenario out with me i show up in tulsa at 6 a.m i gotta check in with the shop i gotta check in with um to make sure the truck's good to go i gotta check in with the dispatch lady and usually you know if i if i'm she gets in there at about seven o'clock so I go out and I get the truck ready at six, get everything fired up, do my pre-trip on the truck, good to go. I don't log on yet because I don't want to start my clock, right? So I go in and I check with the local dispatch lady, tell her I need to have her put me on the board. So I'll go back out to my truck and by about 10 o'clock, 11, I'll, I'll get a load. This happened a couple of times just like this, it was almost almost the same exact scenario played out time and time and time again every time I'd go to the Tulsa terminal. I'd get a dispatch, I'd have to go grab a trailer and I'd have to go to a, uh, a fence, uh, a fence and gate manufacturer in Tulsa, Oklahoma to go get loaded. Usually the dispatch time wasn't until three o'clock in the afternoon so remember i got there at, uh, at six o'clock in the morning all bright-eyed bushy-tailed ready to roll out do you think that they would give me a load that's ready to go oh no mm -mm, no so i get over there to the fence place and i end up sitting in a queue line behind six other trucks and have to sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait to get loaded these loads y'all are cut up messed up odd shaped messed up load, tiered loads that you have to use 18 straps on and you have to tarp, tarp it. So, 
by the time you get that stupid thing tarped up and you're ready to get rolling down the road, you're out of time for the day, you, you know, and you're wore out. So you basically go to the nearest truck stop or back to the yard and shut down, go to sleep, wake up the next morning and then take off. Anytime you come back into the yard for your home time, um, if they send you back a day early before your home flag that you put in for, so if I put in for the 16th and I get back on the 15th, I don't get to go home. I have to check in with the local dispatch to find out if they want me to go and pick up a load. And I have to wait. Because one time I got back, I got back, um, it was around 5 o'clock and it was a day early. And so I got into the yard and I asked my dispatcher if I could go home. And they said, no, you have to wait until morning to check in with the local dispatch to, to make sure that she'll clear you off the board and send you home. Y'all... Uh, yeah, that, that wasn't even funny. Okay? So, just because you get back to the Tulsa Terminal doesn't mean you're going home. I thought that was pretty crappy. You say you're a family-run business and you and you want to do what's best for the driver and all oh, you're all about family and family and family. Yeah, well, you, you don't prove it in the way that you do things. Because if I get home early and I'm, I'm home a day early, why am I spending the night at the yard instead of going home and spending that time with my family? Just to spend the extra time at the yard to get up the next morning to have to check in with somebody to make sure I can get released to go home. Didn't like that. So when I would come back from my home time, or no, when I would get into the terminal, you gotta go in and get an inspection done on your truck and trailer. Well, you know, that's standard. Well, then you gotta go and, and you gotta check in with safety, logs, permits, and local dispatch. Local dispatch will tell you to drop your trailer and you basically just let them know that hey I'm back I'm 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 dropping off this this trailer. You'll have to do an equipment swap meaning anything that you leave on that trailer you have to go to the, the storehouse uh, the inspection bay and you know if you've got 18 straps on there you got to fill out a little form that says hey this load has 18 straps and uh, they, they don't give you bungees so if you leave 25 bungees on a on a set of tarps then you're gonna have to go to the bungee barrel and uh, sit there and untangle hundreds and hundreds of bungees and most of the ones that are in that bungee barrel are toast they don't just give you new equipment you know if I if I if I have 50 bungees on that load give me a box full of brand new bungees what i mean really you're gonna nickel and dime me over bungee cords so yeah you had to swap out you had to make sure that whatever you were leaving on the trailer you went and you went to the um the inspection bay to get your equipment and they checked trust me and if you needed uh new tarps they would require you to roll out your tarps show them the damage and the reason why you were going to swap out your tarps instead of just giving you a new set of tarps because you, you know you know that those tarps are wore out and um so after you did all of that then then you can go home um and this would take hours y'all and you don't get paid any additional money whatsoever Anytime you bring a trailer into the yard, swap out all the equipment, get everything set up, and get everything on the truck and swapped out so that you can leave the truck at the terminal and go home, this is hours of messing around. When you get back, you got to do it all over again. Now you got to swap out equipment, move equipment around, strap down a load, tarp a load, and spend all day just trying to get out of that terminal took a load down into Laredo and dropped it off and I had to wait until the next day so that um, so that they could check the load in because it was going over the border and so I had to pull my tarps off and the whole nine yards so I literally wasted a half a day there um, the whole force dispatch thing um, yeah, it's a nightmare. Um, there was a couple of times they put me on a hot load 
for a dedicated customer of theirs. And I, I delivered a set of poles. I was I was running uh, power poles or something like that into the, I don't know, somewhere in the Thule's out in Kansas or something like that on a construction site. So I get emptied out and I've got to go up to um, Wisconsin or somewhere up there. I don't remember where, but um, I've got to go pick up another load of poles. And so um, I look at my dispatch and I don't have enough hours to really get there and to complete the load. So they, you know, they tell you, oh, dispatch yourself 50 miles an hour and yada, 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 yada. And I told my dispatcher, I said, I've got barely just enough time to get there. I'm not going to have time to, to get under this load, strap it down, do a trailer swap, and do all this additional stuff. And he's like, well, just get going. Get up there as fast as you can. So I did. And I found out it was a hot load. I didn't have the hours to cover it. And they didn't care. Um, so I get there. I get the load strapped down. It took me forever to find this find this trailer y'all i mean it took me hours to, to find out where i needed to check in this was a huge yard and it had trailers all over the place and uh, so i had to locate my trailer it was somewhere out in the yard they didn't know exactly where it was to so go check over in that area over there so i'm literally walking around this big huge facility trying to locate my damn trailer and so i finally found it got it strapped down made sure it was the right load so on and so forth send in my macros and I'm dead tired y'all so I went to the went to the bunk and went to sleep I didn't put in my loaded complete call because I wasn't done loading it right I had just thrown some straps on there just so I can get moved and 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 bunk down for the night I didn't send in my loaded call or my estimated time of arrival or anything else like that because I haven't had a chance to actually uh, pre-plan the load yet because I didn't like to pre-plan the load and give an ETA PTA until I knew when I was rolling out of there, right? Y'all, I get this phone call from my uh, my fleet manager. Where are you at? What are you doing? Why aren't you loaded yet? This is a hot load. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, dude, hold on a second. I said, I put in my arrival call last night. I was out of hours. I said, I PC'd to get here, which is not legal, just so you know. And I said, all of the work that I did last night, I did it off off of the, the logs because I was out of time. And I had to strap the load down so I could move the trailer so I could shut down for the night. And I said, you've got the audacity. When I told you that I didn't have enough time to get here comfortably, legally and safely, and you didn't care. So you had the opportunity to put me on a different load. You knew what my hours were. You knew I didn't have enough time to cover this load. They didn't care, right? How fast can you get it there? Give me your ETA right now. This is a hot load. We've got to get going. We've got to get going. So okay, I'm like, okay, well, um, let me double check. And I gave him an ETA. I said, I don't think that I've got enough time to get there. I said, if I run into any delays, I'm not going to make it. And when I get there, I'm going to be out of time. So um, they're like, well, we'll see if we can unload you on a Saturday or, so or something like that. So I get rolling, right? And uh, I get this this uh, phone call and they said, no, we need you to, we need you to get there today. Um, and we need to, otherwise you're going to be sitting until Monday. Y'all, when it says force dispatch, they will put you into positions that you have no business being in, legally and safely. And even though you have experience, even though you can look at a situation and go, this doesn't feel right, this do, I, I don't feel legal and safe doing this, it's going to take everything in my power, high stress, um, and they just don't care. I spent hours talking to one of the supervisors on the phone about this load, and I said, what are you doing doing this to me? Um, you know, I'm a seasoned driver. I said, I knew this was a bad load before I even went and picked it up. And you know that I don't have the hours to cover this load, and you knew it was a hot load, and you put me on it anyways. 
So that is not legal and that is not safe. So, but I've talked to other drivers and they haven't had those issues. So that's why I say I think it has a lot to do with whatever fleet manager and load planner you just happen to get. I mean, it's luck of the draw. You might get there and have completely different experiences. You know, I've talked to other drivers that they don't have these issues. Well, it must be just my bad luck or something. I don't know. But um, I had a lot of problems. And they didn't seem to care what my hours were. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, the pay structure is good. They pay pretty decently. They've got really nice equipment. And um, just be prepared, be prepared to work your butt off and to not get home very often. Um, it's a lot of hard work and it's it's... It's next level. It, it It's hard. It's difficult. I'd like to say that you would make more money doing all that extra hard work, but I, I can't honestly sit here and, and tell you that, that you will. Um, since I came back to PTL, I, I consistently make more money than I did at Melton doing all that extra work and all that extra strapping, loading, and unloading, and blah, 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 blah. So it, I just, it wasn't worth it to me. <laughs> So, um, definitely that corporate military feel, um, shut up slave, do what you're told. We don't care what you think. Um, we don't care about you as a driver. You don't have a voice. Um, you're just a number, but they say that they're a family, a family oriented business business. Um, but that is not how they make you feel. Um, be prepared to be treated like a grunt an employee having to suck it up and, and, and follow their protocols regardless of how much extra work it causes you um, just an overall attitude of we don't care do what you're told slave that, that uh, they, they totally had that down so <clears throat> but again um, if if you're new to trucking and you want to give it a shot and you don't have anything else to compare it to, you might have a good experience over there. I just know that I didn't, and I couldn't stand it, and I couldn't wait to get away from them, guys. Um, I don't agree with any company that polices each other where, you know, the companies are all out to get you, or the other drivers are all out to get you, um, to tattle on you. Um, you know, I, I do agree that everybody should work together to try to do the, the safe and right thing. Um, but... I, I just I, I didn't like the experience um, and since I came back over to PTL I do have a lot more flexibility and freedom on my home time I get home a lot more often and I make just as much money if not better money um, doing this job than I did over there so that's it that's my review of Mountain Truck Lines um, so if you give them a call find out what they can do for you um, like I said if you don't mind beating being treated like a grunt, like a soldier, um, might be right up your alley. If you're ex-military, you know, or you're a veteran or, or something like that, it, it might be right up your alley. If you uh, don't mind them constantly micromanaging you and always telling you what to do and, and you don't you don't get to say anything or have any thoughts or anything else like that. So, um, yeah. So if you like this video, like and subscribe and uh, share this video with anybody else that you might think might be uh, needing to hear a review of Melton. Maybe you know somebody that's thinking about going to work for Melton or you may, be, you may know somebody that, that might find this video to be funny or something like that. I just thought that they, they, um, they talk a big game. They really do. They've got some pretty decent pay. Um, but that pay just doesn't, in, in my opinion, just does not compensate you for all the hard work that you put in. And, uh, boy, man, do they work the crap out of you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man, six months was all I could handle with that company. And, uh, yeah, I had to get away from them. So, Again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.